Time is the most important resource that we have, which is why I'm making a video about it. Um, time is when we nurture various aspects of our lives and also how we connect with everything around us. Everything can be understood through time. So whatever amount of time, and this doesn't have to be like quantifiable, it can be, but it doesn't have to be like a quantifiable thing. It can be about a relationship between different uses of time. But all of these uses of time heavily impact us. Like we are who we are because of how we use or connect with time. Um, so, you know, if I spend, for instance, like 10 hours running every day, I would be a distance runner. That would be like what I do because that would be who I am. If I, you know, spend a lot of time going to gatherings with a certain group of people, then I would be considered to be part of that group of people. What time represents is who we are and what we value. That's what we put our time into. And so if we say something that might be like a particular thing, a particular truth, but that's not reflected in our use of time, there's a conflict there because time is how we actually show both ourselves and the world what something means to us. That's, that's what time is. Um, and so because time is so important, it is constantly being stolen from us by capitalism. Capitalism takes our time in the most minute ways and also the most large ways. So you might look at like a big sink of time as being something like work. Like we have to work and work takes longer than it should. You know, automation could make a lot of our lives a lot easier and we could do very minimal amounts of work to sustain our current lifestyles um, if we all shared in the wealth that automation would produce. But because automation uh, would be owned in our current society, would be owned by the wealthy, um, that they've decided it's better for us to work than to be idle and get our needs met and think about society. Because um, what... The elites have learned is that anytime people have a surplus of time and there is injustice, people will become upset and try to do something about it. Uh, I think this is like what we saw happen, like George Floyd and COVID uh, intersecting at the same time in order to give us the resistance we saw to police violence in response to George Floyd's murder. Um, like, if you think of like, like, Unfortunately, police killing happens all the time, and the reason we were able to, to like respond in that way this time is because we all were on our devices at that time, because we all had been isolated from our physical connections, so a lot of us saw this, and then we all had time, a lot of us away from work, or just like with different life circumstances than we're used to, so it was a big period of adjustment and we saw this and we're like, actually, we are gonna do something, like this sucks. Um, that was because we had the time <laughs> to, to do that um, collectively. And capitalism steals time from us because they know what we like to do with our time is directly against what they want. Like they generate money by taking our time. So like my, I have some background in advertising and the entire economic model of capitalism is very much interwoven with advertising. Advertising exists as a direct way of translating attention or time into money, right? So like they quantify that and then they try to take every little bit of our attention that they can to sell it to whoever's buying. And we lose ourselves. Like we lose what helps to connect us to the world because we're constantly being shown and told to want things, to do things, to be a particular person. And we actually don't have the time to think about that for ourselves. Now in my work, I see a lot of people who come in and they say, I don't know who I am. Uh, and a lot of the time it's like, they've never really given it like a lot of time to think about or to practice. It's like people come in not knowing who they are because they've never had time and capacity for that time to really think about who they are and to nurture whatever it is that they come to about who they are. Um, I think the thing is like, 
I remain convinced of the inherent good of people's like human nature, whatever that is, because if you give people time and you give them the other necessary things they need to survive, they will want to be good. Like they will want to contribute to their surroundings. They will want to find meaning in life by connecting with other people. Um, and by passing down like what they have been given, like, people want to share that. When they have been given enough, uh, uh, people want to share, unless like that having enough is predicated on someone else not having enough. So um, yeah, I think like our surroundings really do dictate um, our own sense of self. And if we have time, we actually can connect with that. Now, if you're wealthy, a lot of what money means is you get to buy your time back from the system that steals everyone else's time. How do you do that? By paying someone to look for you, by paying someone to look for your kids, by paying someone to drive you places, by getting a jet and flying everywhere like Taylor Swift does. Um, Taylor Swift for that. Um, you, as a capitalist, essentially buy your time back by exploiting the time of all of your workers. So that is really the crux of the difference between classes, which is if you're wealthy, you have the ability to, to buy your time back from, from the systems. And if, if you're poor, the system is constantly taking and stealing your time. Now, the wealthy, a lot of them are not very smart. Like, they buy into capitalism. They're not like, you know, I don't think people really realize how bullshit the system is. I think they sort of just, like, believe what it tells them about themselves because it's easier for them that way. Um, but if people really could see like this, they would say, like, okay, I know what actually is healthy, so I'm going to do that, and I'll continue to exploit other people. Like, I think the thing is, like, by occupying this position, you don't know what's healthy because then you wouldn't have this much power. So what ends up happening is that people buy into this ideology of needing to work all the time and of, like, giving their time to the system to continue to acquire money. Like, I think a lot of wealthy people get trapped in this cycle of investing time and money into having more time and money. And so their time ends up being really empty. Like all they talk about is having money and making money and building connections that will bring them more money. The life of a wealthy person in our society is extremely empty because all they do is accumulate wealth and time and other resources. So suffice it to say, okay, we're, we're gonna make, try to make a conclusion here. Time is our most valuable resource because who we are comes from what we do in the time that we have, right? So especially if we don't have money, I think this is still true if you have money, but especially if you don't, time is your most valuable resource. How you used, and so, okay, so what does that mean? On a grand scheme of things, we collectively need to demand our time back through whatever social changes are needed for us to like have our time. So that would mean just bringing us, like having resources available for everybody so that we actually have time to live our lives. That is a core demand of a better society, time. And I think on a smaller scale, if we're thinking about like personal change, I think thinking about it through the lens of time and like, you know, what do I literally do with my time? And how is that impacting me? And how is that impacting everyone around me? So if my use of time, I'm finding like, oh, like that's sort of against my values, but I'm doing that just out of habit, is I actually get to stop and say like, do I want to keep doing this? Like, I don't. And if there is something I value more by looking at like, do I actually spend time doing this? I can decide, oh, I want to do that more. So I will, I literally put in time with that thing. Um, and the other thing about time is that time, how we use time is very much tied to like what is convenient or what is right in front of us. So it also becomes this process if we want to take our time back of being very intentional about what people were around and what those people like to do and what things, what media is in front of us 
because we often end up just engaging with that because of proximity. Like it's just right there, but we can move things around in our environment. We can change our environment and that changes our usage of time. So all this to say, I recorded this video just sort of off the cuff. Usually I have these big complicated outlines, but with this one, I just decided to talk. Uh, is this a good use of my time? Did you like it? Would you like to see more videos like this where I'm just talking? Um, also, when it comes to your time, what are some things that are occupying your time that are a reflection of your values? Can you do more of that? What are things that are that you're doing with your time that are not a reflection of your values? Why are you doing those things with the time that you have? And one last note, uh, just a thanks to my patrons, and if you want to uh, see more videos like this, you can join them.